Here we go, guys. Segments of circles. I know you've been waiting on it. So we have two major properties we got to learn today, how they work and what they look like. I am going to show you how to derive them, but you don't have to understand that part too much. First off, we have two chords. I'm not talking about the angles. We did that last, last week, right? We talked about how this angle goes with this arc and this angle goes with this arc. We're not talking about angles and arcs. We're talking about the lengths of the segments. So like this portion is what I'm calling A, um, and then you know this portion is what I'm calling C, for instance. I'm talking about how long are these pieces. So in order to figure this out, and, and you do not have to understand where these come from, it's not a big deal, but I just think it's kind of fun. If we connect these two endpoints, what we have are two triangles. And what I am gonna show you is that those are similar triangles. How do I know? Let's look at this angle right here. Doesn't it open up to this arc? I don't know how long, this, how big this arc is, but it doesn't matter. What about this angle? Let's pretend this is like 100 degrees. Wouldn't this inscribed angle be 50? And wouldn't this inscribed angle also be 50? So those two angles we know are equal. So let me get rid of all this, but let's go back. We know that this angle and this angle are the same size. We know that these angles are the same size because of vertical angles. So what we have are similar triangles, and we can set up a proportion. We could say A over B equals D over C. How do I know that? A is between my 1 and my 2. B is between my 1 and my 2. They go together. And then D is the other side that goes with C. So I know that this proportion is true, and when I cross multiply, I get AC equals BD. This is the thing you have to know at the end of the day. So first rule is that if you have chord, chord, so you need to know this for sure. Chord, chord, you're always gonna do part times part. That's the rule for chords. You multiply the parts. And that's what ends up happening. If I get rid of all this original junk, what am I saying? I'm saying that if you look at this chord, that you multiply the parts, A times C. If you look at this chord, you multiply the parts, B times D. That's the rule, okay? Um, some things that people get confused. Just because they multiply to the same thing does not mean that they're the same size. Let's pick a number like 36. Doesn't 2 times 18 equal 36? Yes. So could B be 2 and D be 18? Theoretically, yes. And then what about like 6 times 6? That's also 36. So could this be 6 and 6? Yeah. So 6 times 6 and 18 times 2, they're both 36. So they fit the rule. When you multiply the parts, they have to be the same answer. That doesn't mean they're the same length. Right now, this one is length 12 and this one is length 20. So they are not the same size, they have the same product. And there are more combinations, right? They could have been nine and four. So there's more choices than what I even listed. Could have been 12 and three. Let's see what it looks like on an actual problem. So here we have part, we have two chords. So we know that five X times eight has to equal 12 times nine. Now, you're not going to like this. I know I'm always pushing you. I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. And I'm pushing you again right now. There's a difference between being good and being excellent. And I want you guys to be the top of the top. And people that are at the top of the top, they do, some, some, they do things differently. And one of the things they would do here is they would not multiply first, make big numbers, and then try to reduce. I'm going to solve it two different ways. Let's do it that way. Let's multiply first. Well, you'd get 40x equals 108. You have to divide by 40, divide by 40, and you get x would equal what? 54 over 20, which would be 27 over 10, which we can get there. That's fine. That's our answer. That's the right answer. But if you didn't know 12 times 9 is 108, you're already going slow. If you didn't know how to reduce 108 over 40, you're going even slower. So there's some sticking points there. So how would I do the same question? I want you to pay attention to this and see if this makes sense. 
Because a lot of you guys are like, I can't do it. It's not for me. It's too hard. If you, if you can't do it and you don't ever try to do it, you're never going to be able to do it. And you are capable of doing tough things, guys. And I've told you that all year. And you guys have pulled through so much. I'm so proud of each and one of you for how hard you've worked and how well you've done this whole school year. But this is another thing that feels a little awkward, but you can do it if you, if you pay attention and you practice it a couple times. So what could I do? Instead of multiplying first, what I would look for is a GCF. What's a number that I can divide both sides by? And the only number I can do that with is the number 4. But if I divide 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now I have 5x times 2. That would be 10x. And I have 9 times 3 is 27. Divide by 10, and I'm done. Guys, that is faster and better. When you get good at it, you can do it faster than you can type it into a calculator, I promise. When you're on a non-calculator SAT question and every second counts, knowing good math, quick math, is the difference between being good and being great. And I want you guys to be the best that you can. Let's practice another one here real quick. What if it was something like, I'm just going to make something up. What if we had like 18x times 22 equals, I don't know, um, 11 times 9? Yeah, something fun like that. What could we do? If this was me, I'd be like, okay, well, 11 goes into both sides. I'll divide both sides by 11. They cancel out over here. 11 divided and 22 become the number 2. But wait, I can divide both sides by 9 as well. So I can divide this side by 9 and 9. Divide this side by 9 would be 2. And what I'm left with is 2 times 2 times x. That would be 4x. And oh, everything canceled out over here, so that equals 1. So I know x equals 1 fourth. Rewind that and see if you could do that again. And look at just how hard it would be if you didn't do it that way. You want to do 18 times 22 and then divide that by 99? Really? Or do 99 divided by that? Really? That's a lot harder. Anyways, moving on. Here's another example. Chord times chord. Or sorry, we have two chords intersecting, so we're going to do part times part. X minus 1 times X plus 1 equals part times part. X plus 7 times X minus 3. So we distribute out and we practice this on the last video. I really hope you watch that one. Don't just skip through it. I said a lot of good things in there. But this would be x squared minus 1. I hope we know this quickly and correctly. This would be x squared plus 4x minus 21. We can subtract x squared from both sides, and we have negative 1 equals 4x minus 21. So 4x would equal 20 if we add 20 to both sides and x equals 5. Then you go back, you plug it in, you see how you do. Perfect. Moving on. Next rule. Um, so once again, you can skip ahead around, a, you know, you can skip the next minute if you want. I'm going to prove why it's true and how it works. Um, in order to do that, we're going to draw triangles again. This time, we're going to have a triangle that can I connect here, and it's going to be kind of messy, but this is the triangle number one. Try to remember where all those parts are. So I don't even know what color that is, like a peach color. I don't know. Not a good color, that's for sure. And then triangle two, we're going to do the same thing for the other side, and I'll try to make it not overlap so much, but uh, the program kind of just overlaps them. Ah. Oh, wells. All right, and then we have this blue triangle. And these two triangles are similar, just like what happened last time. This angle opens up to this arc, and this angle opens up to the same arc. So like if this was 50 degrees, these would both be 25 degree angles. So we know, we know that those two angles are the same size. We also know that they both use this corner. So once again, we know that the two triangles are similar because of angle angle. So which pieces go together? Let's start with A. A is between my two, and I didn't mark it, but I'm going to put like three dashes in there, and that would go with this corner, three dashes. In between my two and my three. So what's in between my two and my three on the other triangle? That would be C. 
equals on the blue triangle, we're going to do this entire side. That would be C plus D over, that's between 2 and 1, so it's got to be between 2 and 1. That would be this entire side, A plus B. So that's the setup based off the two similar triangles, and we cross multiply, and we get A times A plus B equals C times C plus D. Boom. Boom. I'm going to erase all this, but that's the proof. Like, that's why it works. You don't have to understand that. Not a big deal. But let's take a look at the end result. What is the end result? It is A times A plus B equals C times C plus D. The way I word this is outside times total. You're doing the outside part times the total equals the outside part times the total. So let's go put this into practice. Outside x times total x plus 7 equals outside 5 times total 14. So the rule for these types of... It, it, I didn't even tell you. This is for secants and tangents. We're going to be doing tangents next. But it is outside times total equals outside times total. That's x squared plus 7x. This would equal 70. So we make one side 0. And then we try to factor it. So you go down the list. Are there factors of 70 that subtract to equal 7? 2 and 35, 3, uh, 4 does not go into 75. And 14, nope. 6, nope. 7 and 10. So I don't think it happens. Actually, I know it doesn't happen. So this is not factorable. So what do we do? We do the quadratic formula. Hit pause and try to do this without any help. All right. So hopefully you did this already. But what I do is b squared minus 4ac first. So that would be 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 70. That would be 49 minus, or sorry, plus 280, which is 329. And that is not going to break down. So then we plug it in. It's going to be negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 329 all divided by 2. But wait, it can't be both answers. I want, I want to test something out. Pay attention. This is a big deal. What is negative 7 plus 7? Hope you said zero, okay? What is negative seven plus the square root of 49? Think, 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 think. Well, the square root of 49 is just seven. So that is zero. What is negative seven plus the square root of, let's say 47? And I don't care about what the actual number is. I need you to tell me, is it positive? Is it negative or is it zero? And if I did negative 7 plus root 47, it would be a negative answer. What about negative 7 plus root 50? That would be a positive answer. Why? Root 49 is 7. So negative 7 plus 7 is 0. So if it's more than root 49, it's going to be a positive number. So what is negative 7 plus root 329? Well, it's going to be a positive number. So you need to understand that. 49 is the breaking point. What if it was negative 10 plus root, I don't know, 90? Is that negative, positive, or zero? That is negative. What about negative 10 plus the square root of 100? That is zero. What about negative 10 plus the square root of 110? That is positive. This is the number 10. Root 100 is the breaking point. So it, more than root 100 would make it positive. Less than root 100 would make it negative. So how about here? Plus root, we already said this. What is negative 7 plus root 329? It is a positive answer. So negative 7 plus root 329 divided by 2 is the only acceptable answer because when you plug it in, X has to be positive on this problem. What about the minus one? 
Why did I just totally disregard that? What's negative 7 minus root 329? Well, that's definitely negative, right? A negative minus a number is just more negative. Okay. That's a tough concept. You'll get there. You'll get there. But that's our final answer. All right. Tangents and secants, same idea. It is outside times total. But look at this. What is the outside? Six. What is the total? Also six. So it's really just the tangent squared. It's six squared. It's six times six. Equals outside x plus two times the total x plus two plus five is x plus seven. So this would be x squared plus 9x plus 14 equals 36. So x squared plus 9x minus 22 equals 0. This one does factor. I know I'm going fast, but I hope you remember how to factor. We talked about it. So we know that the factors of 22 that subtract equal 9 are going to be 11 and 2. So this would be negative 11 and positive 2. Now wait, plug them in. Is negative 11 okay? Nope, negative 11 plus 2 does not work. How about 2? Is 2 plus 2 okay? Yeah, I like 2 plus 2. So x equals 2 is the only thing that actually works here. But it's the same rule. So it's outside times total for tangents and secants. But what if they're both tangents? Look real hard. What do you think is true here? Just, just think, what does it look like? If you said they're equal, you're right. Like if I said x squared equals y squared, wouldn't you just take the square root of both sides and say x equals y? Yeah. So yes, technically we could square them both because the rule says outside times total equals outside times total. But if I'm going to square them both, isn't my very first step to square root them? So we know at the end of the day that these are just equal to each other. And so on this question, x would have to be 15. So two tangents that start at the same place and hit the same circle have to be the same size. It's one of our rules. Love it. All right, one more unique situation here is this doesn't go all the way across. We have to make it go all the way across. And because it's a radius, we know the rest of it would be 8. So just a quick reminder, hey, you cannot stop in the middle of the circle. You have to go completely across the circle. This would be outside x times total x plus 16 equals outside times total 6 times 6. x squared plus 16x equals 36. So x squared plus 16x minus 36 equals 0. That would be x plus 18 x minus 2, so x equals 2 or negative 18, but it has to be 2 because x can't be negative 18 here. Quick bonus tip, quick bonus tip. We're going to learn more about this later, but we could have done it an alternate way. We could have drawn a radius here and look real hard. It's not drawn perfectly, but like, can you kind of tell what happens? When a radius hits a tangent, it makes a right angle. So we could have called this 8, and then that would be a Pythagorean theorem question. That was also, like, that was on the table. We could have done it that way. And that would have been a 6, 8, 10, which if you know that this is 10, you could have known that x equals 2 really fast if you knew that property. So we'll talk about that next time. But those are the big rules, guys. Love you. Hopefully that made sense. I'll see you next time.